Hey, Wayne. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you, too. Nice to be here with you. Thank you. You, too. Um, Wayne, you know, you you have been around singing Christian music for so long, and you've really paved the way for so many others who who have come after you. Um, But I got to tell you, it's 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 so great to see you staying the course. Um, you know, opening the gates for so many to come after you and then just getting better and better and better <laughs> as the years go on. Um, I hope so. You know, it's, I, it, I feel better than I have in a long, long time in so many ways and so thankful to still be able to sing and play and go wherever God opens the door. I'm more willing now to do anything. And that's refreshing to me. You know, in the past, you had certain parameters you tried to stay within. Right. (laughs) Had to meet certain criteria. And it was just um, a little bit stifling looking back on it. And now um, I feel a lot more free to go wherever God opens the door, pretty much anywhere in the world the last few years. It's been great. And do you feel sort of a renewed passion for your interest? I mean, how long have you been singing Christian music? Because you you were one of the pioneers. You were one of the guys that really just sort of cleared the path for well, contemporary there, Christian music. There were a lot fewer of us back in, when I started in right. uh, the late 70s and uh, around 1979. But you don't, you don't seem to be tiring out. I don't, I, like I said, I'm, I have more energy for it now than ever. The time is short without being overly dramatic. The time is short for me and for all of us, you know, and for the world itself. And like you were talking about with Rick, there are people that are that are perishing every day and, and either we take it seriously and we go after them with love and with compassion and with a great story of redemption or we just kind of yawn and wait for the Lord to come back. So right. I'm, I'm thankful for every breath. You know, you, you go through some knocks and bruises and you go through some, some things that set you back a bit and yet God still looks upon us and favors us. I'm just very, th- and, and gratitude makes a lot of difference in my life. Be thankful. We, we, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, just a, you having a, a renewed understanding of grace, yeah. grace and mercy. Yeah, I, I grew up in a Christian family, a wonderful home with uh, just, it was Mayberry, man. It was just Mayberry, you know, I, we, lit, almost literally. We had, one, we had one sheriff, we had a cop car, and we had a jail and a courthouse in one building, and and uh, just such a, a, a safe, wonderful upbringing. And um, boy, it sounds, it sounds a little harsh, but I, I really didn't understand how much grace I needed. I really thought I was a pretty good kid, a pretty good guy. I don't really need grace. I mean, what have I done, you know? Right. And, and then you come to the understanding of no matter how well behaved you might have been or, or how much you've walked the line, Man, we're, our, our propensity for sin and for darkness is just immeasurable. And we just all need God to just pour that grace on us every day. You know, you know uh, what, what you just said is, is not typical from, uh, it's not typical coming from um, people who share their testimony. A lot of times I hear people say that, you know, I had this hole in my heart, right? Mm. I, I, want, I want to know that somebody really loves me. And I kept trying to prove myself to everybody mm. else. Mm. But you just said... I just thought I was so darn good that <laughs> I, I didn't need that grace. Well, and that your yeah. propensity to sin yeah. really had to come home to you before. So what is it? Do you come to the Savior because you need someone to love you? Or do you come to the Savior because you realize that my propensity to sin is so great that I'm, I am lost without him? And I need him to overhaul my heart. Yeah, I just, even from the beginning, though, if we're really honest with ourselves, even in my childhood and teenage years and young adult years, mm. you know, in the privacy of our homes or in the, when, our, when we're together with our thoughts and we're by ourselves, we know. You we know, know what? We know how, how dark we can be. We know what thoughts come into your head and you go, oh my goodness, what, where did that come from? And, yeah. and we need the, the grace of God to wash over us and cleanse us from, from that darkness. And, and um, I just, uh, you know, again, being grateful that God re- revealed that to me. Yeah. And I didn't go on with that. I sort of had made a deal with God, I think, looking back on it. I didn't think of this at the time, but I felt like I'd made a deal with God. Look, here's the deal. I'll be good, and here's what I expect. And in truth, I realized that the breath I just took was a gift from God. And the one I'm about to take, if he allows it, is a gift from God. And, and so being grateful for all those things That's and right. not taking them for granted has changed the way I feel. And knowing Christ as my, not only my Savior and my Lord, but as my friend, 
I've written songs about that, but I really never knew him as my friend who understood that I was going to fall down and that he was going to be there and say, hey, let's, let's go. We still got stuff to do. And mm. so seeing him in so many different ways has really changed the way I walk and the way I live. Did you have a, a close run-in with uh, death? <laughs> and did that yeah. change the, the, the way that you write songs? Well, it hasn't yet because it's still relatively close. Uh, yeah, I came within about an hour, they told me, of being gone. Uh, I was misdiagnosed in the hospital in an emergency, and uh, my wife was there uh, fighting for me and standing firm with the doctors and nurses, and uh, it was just a real toxic situation going on in my body, and uh, it took me a long time to come out of it, and uh, I was close to, to being done. And whenever you come back home after an event like that, you look at the things that you've accomplished, you look at the trophies, whatever, or the, or the plaques or the awards or whatever, mm. and you realize if you were dead, those would still be there. Those are about yesterday. Those are about what happened before. And the fact that we're living and breathing, that you're here doing what you're doing tonight, that I'm able to do what I do, God has stuff for us to do in the future. The past, that's great. Pay tribute to that, be thankful for it, but that has nothing to do with right now. Right now is the time to do something fresh and new. And yeah, it, it got my attention. Yeah. I, it, it reminds me of uh, Johnny Cash and that song that he wrote before he died. Oh my he had gosh. apparently come to Christ and realized that as he looks at all of his gold records and yeah. all of his trophies, he's saying, what, what is all this stuff? What yeah. is all of this yeah. stuff but, yeah. but, but idols right. you know, and monuments to a lifestyle that really didn't mean anything. Well, those things for me, uh, even tonight, I've, I've met some folks here that tell me that some of the songs from 20 years ago really helped them at a crisis point in their yep. lives. And it yep. just, and I'm not making, I, I really sincerely, it just overwhelms me yeah. that, that God has used those songs. I, I, I never had that ambition or that, that expectation. Well, listen, I, I'm, I am so thankful um, that, that you've kept on and that you, uh, you really do keep getting better uh, as the years go on. And um, I think that God matures you and he's so, he's so gracious to use the mm. bumps and the difficulties mm. to bring a greater depth to the ministry that we have to offer the church. Yeah. And, uh, and that's gonna come out in your songs. Yeah. It's gonna come out in your life and the stories that you tell. Yeah. And, uh, and we just, reach a different crowd. We reach a different person who that's right. we sympathize and empathize with it before I really didn't, so. You have another yeah. song for us? I do. I wrote this song after I had sat across in a, in a motorcycle repair shop from a couple of bikers. I'm a rider. I'm not a biker. I don't. But uh, these guys were bikers, and they asked me what I did, and I told them. And I uh, told them about the Lord. And uh, as I rode home, I started praying for them and hoping something I had said would mean something to them. Yeah. And then I tried to imagine them in heaven, and I found it difficult because they didn't look like the kind of people that I were was told going to be in heaven. And, uh, no motorcycles? In then, I, then I, well, <laughs> again, then I felt very ashamed of myself that I could not allow for anyone that came to the cross to spend eternity with us together in heaven. And I was so ashamed of myself. And I remember thinking, who in the world do you think you are? You think you deserve this because yeah. you're this or you're that? And it just overwhelmed me. And I began to imagine these guys walking through the kingdom and they were met as they walked into the kingdom by two little sweet little old ladies at my church and they were trembling and they said, oh, how'd you guys get in here? And the answer was, we got in here just like you did. And it had, yeah. And it, you know, for me, for, me growing up, it, for me growing up, it was about perfect attendance, Sunday school and sacrifice. And uh, I tell people I, I, I had perfect attendance Sunday school pins five years in a row and I infected my whole town with every childhood disease known to men. And uh, these guys came in, I pray, by the grace of God, by the same thing that brought us there. So that's right. I'm thankful for that. So that's, that's what this little song is about. 